Well, good evening, Faith Center family and friends. We want to welcome you to our online Wednesday night service. And I want to tell you right off the, right off the bat, as you can tell, it's a little different tonight. Reason being, uh, due to the weather that came into our area this afternoon, we had severe thunderstorms, we had tornadoes in the area, and uh, we were not able to come together at the church as a team to bring this to you tonight. So we are bringing it to you tonight from our home, the Cantu home, right here in Sulphur, Oklahoma. But this is our Wednesday night, FCC Wednesday night service online. And I want to let you know, I believe that the Lord has a word for us tonight. And as you can tell, there's no musicians. The praise team is not here behind me. But the Lord spoke to my heart in, in preparing for tonight that we're still going to worship. Well, how can we worship without the worship team? Well, we believe we are a church that knows how to worship the Lord even without a worship team. And I want to ask you to share this if you can right now. Faith Center family and friends, we'd like to get the word out. It's going to be a powerful night. I believe that tonight, even though it might be a little different. In fact, we're witnessing another first tonight. A couple of weeks ago, we had another first in ministry, in our ministry, never having a drive-in church service before on Resurrection Sunday. Well, here we are two weeks later with another first, our very first Wednesday night online service coming from our home uh, in here in, in, uh, in sulfur. So let me just say this. I felt like the Lord showed me how that we could worship together just before we get into the word tonight. I hope you're ready to receive something from God's word, but you know what I felt in my heart to share with you was a story. The Lord reminded me of that. I remember seeing reading about not that long ago about a place in America in California, actually called death Valley. There's a place in California that's called Death Valley, and the reason it's called Death Valley is because it's the hottest, driest place in America. Nothing grows there. Nothing lives there. There are huge cracks on the ground. It's dry. It's, it's arid. Nothing grows there. Why? Because the ground is not conducive. The environment is not conducive for things to grow. Nothing lives there. No life there. But something happened a few years ago, what people, some people are called, but called a phenomenon. What had happened a few years back, there were seven inches of rain that fell within a 24 hour period right there in Death Valley. And it didn't happen immediately, but several months later, as a result of all of that rain, something that never happens in Death Valley, California. But as a result of uh, all of that rain, several months later, the, there's something happened. Something happened in that Death Valley. The beautiful wildflowers began to began to grow. Life started to form. Life started to come up out of the ground because of all of the rain that had fallen. And it's like I wish I had a picture I could show you. You could Google it. It was actually called and referred to the Super Bloom. And you can Google it. Just don't Google it right now. I want you to hear what the Lord wants to say tonight. But uh, actually, all these beautiful, incredible-looking wildflowers began to pop up, and it looked like something out of a movie. You know what? They had the name wrong. It wasn't Death Valley. It was Dormant Valley. It still had the potential to produce life, the potential to produce beauty. The only thing that was missing at, in Death Valley was the water, was the source of life. And you know, I believe it's the same way for us as Christians that we have the, all the potential in the world to be successful, to be prosperous, to bloom, to shine, to flourish. In this time, even during this temporary setback, we, we have the potential on the inside of us to flourish and to shine. All that's needed is the water, the rain, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the Word of God, the living Word. So I want to encourage us right now. Can we just enter into a time of worship? Yes, with no music, with no instruments, just thanking him right now for the rain, for the rain, his presence. We, don't, we love our musicians. We love to, to, to praise the way that we do when we come together. But we don't have to have that to have his presence. We're thankful for it. There's nothing like it. But I tell you what, right now, it was our prayer, even before we came on the air, that his presence would fill this room and his presence would fill the room you're watching from at home tonight. And that is what we believe is happening right now. We can worship him right now as we just recognize his presence. We believe he's, 
He's with us even now as we just worship him. Can you just do that right now? I know this might be a little bit different, but there's a worship on the inside of you that is dying to come out. The rain from heaven, the Holy Spirit is already within us. Everything that's needed to see life, to see, uh, uh, to see the blessing of God just come from within our hearts and our lives. It's all there. The potential, the power is there. All we need is the rain, and that is what we are calling upon now. Holy Spirit, now fill this room in our living room right now at home with our family sitting by, all of us together. Fill this place right now, Holy Spirit, as we choose. It's a church choice. Worship is a choice. We choose to worship you right now on this Wednesday night. We thank you, Father, for protecting us today from the storms, from the tornadoes. We all saw the news. We all saw that there, there was uh, ones that were very close uh, in Medill. We, our hearts go out to those in Medill and uh, those that were uh, hit and devastated by today's weather. We pray for them. And so, Father, right now, but we choose to worship you on this night. We choose to worship you and thank you for your protection, for your provision vision for your peace for your presence and that is what we do we worship you you know that story also reminded me of a song that we do in worship when we come together here lately it's been online a lot and uh, drive in church as well but there's a song that we've been doing called from graves to gardens and I tell you, I could not think, I help but think about that song that he's taken when I read this story about the uh, Death Valley in California and how everything, that, that place that was dead and dormant and dry just began to burst uh, at the seams with life and beauty. And I just couldn't help but think about that worship song. So I believe right now that we could just like we would if we were to sing that graves into gardens. That's a reason to worship him, church. I speak it over you now that we worship him. You can worship him right now. Maybe you're in a dry season. Maybe you're in a, a dry place. Come on, it happens. But you can worship your way out. You can praise your way out. You can usher in the presence of the Lord and watch him rain down on you, rain down in your situation right now. And it's just the, the key to it all is understanding worship all that's needed is his presence and that's what draws in his presence is our worship is our praise i feel it right now tonight church family i believe you do too and you know me i don't just say stuff like that but i believe as we just gather together come on online tonight a little bit different he is with us he gathers and he comes close as we gather in his name we know that all it takes is two or three that gather together come on he said he'd be right there in the midst so, Father, we just worship you for just a few more minutes. We take time out of our night. We take time out of this week to say you are worthy. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. It doesn't say it has to be limited to a church building. No, it says the true worshipers will worship in spirit, not in a church building, in spirit and in truth. So, Father, right now, do something miraculous through this Facebook Live uh, broadcast tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you draw people to yourself as we just worship you, as we humble ourselves in your presence, recognizing that you are God. You are God in this season. You are God in every season. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for taking us, Father God, even to higher heights, Lord. We know that we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. We thank you, Father, that as a church that we are experiencing a momentum from your spirit. We believe it, Father, in the name of Jesus. So right now, I thank you, Lord, that we just worship you together. Come on, lift him up right now. Come on. There's nothing more powerful than worshiping your God right in the midst of your own own home, in your living room, wherever you're watching from. Come on, usher in his presence before we just uh, switch gears here in just a moment. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. I have a word. I believe the Lord has a word for us. But let's just make the most of this time right now together as we worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for showing yourself. Father, for revealing yourself. You said as we draw close to you, you draw close to us. Thank you, Father for just allowing us to sense your presence as we worship you together. Father, even though it might be a little bit different, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you're still there and you're with us. And I thank you, Father, for having your way. Holy Spirit, you have your way from this moment forward as we recognize your presence now. Father, here, here to lead and to guide and to minister to every single person. 
Father, within the sound of my voice. I pray that this will be shared, Father, and it'll be it'll go out, Father, to touch the multitudes for your glory. Because we know, Father, that you are reaching people during this hour. You are ministering your love and your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness, your deliverance to people in this hour when we need it most. A world full of panic needs a church that's full of power. So, Lord, we release your power right now in the name of Jesus to touch hearts and to change lives. Well, thank you, church, for worshiping. I believe we've set an atmosphere. I believe you set an atmosphere in your home that God's presence has just invaded our space tonight. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. Thank you for worshiping the Lord together with us tonight. And now what we want to do, church family, is give you an opportunity to give just like we always do before we go, go into the Word tonight. If you would like to give, if you are prepared to give, you know how we do it right now. There's a couple of different ways. I'm going to see if I can memorize it. I think I've got it memorized. A few different ways you can give tonight if you'd like to. You can go to our uh, church app. It's FC Church at either the Apple Store, App Store, or Google Play. It's FC Church. You download the app, the church app. You go down to the bottom where it says give, and you press the give button down at the bottom of the home screen. You can give that way, or you can use any smartphone, and you can text FC Church app at 77977. I think I got it right. I think I got it memorized. You can give that way, or you can mail it in at Faith Center Church, P.O. Box 81, Sulphur, Oklahoma, 73086. Or if you're local, you can stop by the church office Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. We are closed from 12 to 1, and you can give your tithe or offering that way as well. One more announcement. Sunday morning is coming. This Sunday, we are planning to have drive-in church once again. Pastor Craig will be ministering. We know it's going to be powerful, so we want to encourage you, make plans to attend. We've had two drive-in church services. Both times, we've had the parking lot full. So please plan on joining us again. It's going to be incredible. We look forward to that. Now, I want you to get ready for the word. I want to ask you if you would to go with me to, um, I want to just begin. I want to go to Ephesians, but before I do that, I want to share a scripture with you real quickly to set all this up. Uh, that I shared on Sunday morning. I talked about the power of spiritual momentum and how, how that uh, Jesus appeared to his disciples right after his resurrection, right after he had uh, resurrected, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he appeared to them, the Bible says, while they were locked behind closed doors in fear of the Jewish leaders. I'm not going to re-preach that, but there were some things that Jesus spoke over his disciples after he appeared to them that I believe the Lord shows us in that account of John 20. It was three things that Jesus said that launched them into their ministry. It was not the end when Jesus died. It was just the beginning. When he rose again the third day, it was the beginning and the launching of the, of the uh, uh, church of the living God. And so in the same way, he spoke three things. He said, peace. He said, I'm sending you out as the Father sent me. I'm sending you. And then the third thing he said, uh, receive the Holy Spirit. We covered that on Sunday morning, the three keys to walking in spiritual momentum. Well, here tonight, I want to show you there's another place in Ephesians when the Apostle Paul gives us four steps that I believe in the same way that helps us to walk with a spiritual momentum. See, effective Christians, effective churches are those that are moving Moving, not stale and stagnant with the things of God, but moving forward, growing in our faith, moving forward with the things of God and, and developing as a follower of Christ and becoming all that he's made us to be. It doesn't happen overnight, but there are sure steps along the way. We, we, everybody is moving in our church. There's the lost are getting saved. The saved are getting discipled. And the discipled are, are, are getting outside the four walls of the church and making a difference. See, we're all moving. We're all moving in some way. And so those, that I believe that is what we've been called to do. So I want to just share part two tonight of the power of spiritual momentum. And before we go to Ephesians, Psalm 1611 just simply says this. You will show me the path of life. 
See, there's a specific path that God wants us to walk on. It shows us right here in Psalm 16, 11. You will show me the path of life. The, a path is nothing more than a place where we walk on that we take steps. And that's the, that's the journey. It's a journey of our faith. It's, it's, a, it's a developing. It's a continual. It's a progression. It's a process. And the way Psalms puts it is it's a, it's a path that we walk on. Now, let me show you what happens when you get on the right path. When you choose to walk on the path of life that comes from only one way, and that is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, you will show me. God will show us. It, it only comes from a personal relationship with him, with God, through Jesus Christ. But here's what happens, church, when we choose to get on that path. Here comes the momentum. This is what it says. It says, your presence, after you, you will show me the path of life, then it says, in your presence is what? Fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Joy and joy and, and pleasures forevermore is just simply what we receive after we choose to walk on the path of life. I'm here to tell you there's a good possibility that there may, may be a whole lot more that God has for you. You may be at a great place, but I'm here to tell you there's always more. Are you taking steps? Have you been taking steps with God during this temporary setback and maybe being quarantined at home? Are you taking steps? Because I believe that's what I hear the Spirit of God saying. He's put us on a path. And we are going somewhere. He's even given us his spirit and given us momentum, church, to move forward and to move forward in power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I want to go to Ephesians 1 because I'm going to show you in the word real quickly four steps that Paul gives us as he kind of more or less says the same thing. Walking with a spiritual momentum. How does it happen, Pastor Manny? You know, on Sunday morning, I talked about taking steps. You know, and that's really what momentum is. It's taking steps that we all, all ought to be taking steps to become closer with God in our relationship. And that's true. But tonight, I want to show you what the steps look like. The first step, I want to just read it to you in Ephesians 1, verse 17. This is a prayer. Paul is praying, writing to the Ephesian church, but he's praying in this letter that he's writing. This is what he said. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Watch that. Basically what Paul is saying in this prayer, I pray that you would see what I see through revelation. I pray that you would know what I know through revelation, not just information, but revelation that comes from the Spirit of God. That was Paul's prayer, that you would see, that the church, the Ephesus church would see what he sees, that he, they would know what he knew because of his walk, because of the path that the Apostle Paul chose to walk on. And he shows them right here. He, he tells them that your that you would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, here's the first step. So that the very next line in that verse 17, here's the first step right here. Are you ready? The first step after he said that you would know the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Here it is. So that you may know him better. That's the first step, I believe, to walking in spiritual momentum. It's knowing him better. That word know is the word a Greek word that it, it, it doesn't just mean like to have a, a mental assent of. It is the word that implies intimacy. In fact, it's the same word that's used in the Bible when in Genesis, when it spoke of Eve, when it said that Adam knew Eve, his wife. He knew her in an intimate way, and therefore they were able to produce children. It's that same word, the word no. It's, it, it's a word that's in, uh, that implies intimacy. That's the first step, church, to walking in the power of spiritual momentum. And that's the first step is knowing him in a personal relationship. See, many people know of God, but many people don't know God, know him in an intimate way. And that, that just simply comes by just simply acknowledging him, humbling yourself, repenting of your sin and saying, here I am, God. I give you my life. It's, it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. Do you know that the God of the universe knows everything about you? But let me flip that tonight. He wants for you to know everything about him. It's all about a relationship. It's about what he wants to show you. It's like Paul said, I pray that you would see what I see, that you would have wisdom and revelation, that you would see 
God for who he really is. Not some being in a distant place, but the, the love of your soul, the one that knows you better than, the, than you know yourself. The one that chooses to walk alongside you and, and, and know you in an intimate way to have a relationship with you. Can you believe that? The God of heaven, the God of the universe would choose to have a relationship with us, to know you and I intimately. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. But that's the first step. Do you know him? That's my question real simply tonight. Do you know? Now, I know you know him, but do you really know him? Have you spent time with him today? See, you can't know somebody you don't spend time with. So you can't really say you know. We can't say we really know God. But yet our lifestyle doesn't reflect that. We don't spend any time with him. We don't uh, talk to him. Come on. You're not going to know nobody you don't spend time with and talk to. Another way we get to know him better, know him intimately, is through his word. Have you gotten into his word lately? I want to encourage you. That's the first step. That's the first step. But now let's keep going. Let's take the next step. And then he says, after you would know him better. That all, that's the first step to a brand new life is just simply giving your heart to Christ. But that's not all there is. That's the beginning. That's the first step. And then he says in the next, in the next verse, I pray also, watch, he goes to the next step. I pray also after you know him better. He said that the eyes of your heart, watch this, listen to this, the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. Wait a minute. The eyes of your heart, when you look at that, that don't really, well, on the surface, you would, you would think Paul had it wrong. Our eyes aren't in our heart. Our eyes are in our head. You got it wrong, my brother. But no, Paul doesn't have it wrong when you understand what he's saying. That the eyes of our heart would be enlightened. See, you really, you and I are looking through life right here tonight. I'm going to preach tonight on, online. I, I know, I know you are, you're hearing this tonight. I believe this comes from the Spirit of God. Hear this. This is for us tonight, church. We don't see through these eyes. We see through the eyes of our heart. In fact, that's why the Bible says to guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Everything from your life that's flowing out of you right now, it's not coming from these eyes. It's coming from the eyes of your heart, the real you, the you on the inside. And that's why Paul said you've got to allow that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. That word enlightened means to be, to be made uh, focused and clear, not muddy. And see, sometimes in life, because I've said this Sunday, a lot of times because of people, because of our past, or because of problems. We allow our heart to get muddy. We allow our heart to get calloused. Maybe we've been hurt. You know what? That happens in life. But Paul said, I pray the next step that you have to take after you know God in a personal relationship is that you've got to allow him to work in your heart. You have to be set free from the things maybe that, if I can just be honest, the next step is finding freedom in God. First, it's getting to know God. Then once you get to know this God, you know him as the one who makes you new, makes all things new, sets you free from your past, sets you free from the hurt and the pain, sets you free from what went wrong, maybe sets you free from that regret, from making those, those uh, poor choices, making those mistakes in life. Come on. We've all been there. But hear what the Spirit of God is saying. There are steps that he wants you to take. And the, the next step here that Paul explained to, to us in the word was is taking that step of going inside, allowing the spirit of God to enlighten, it says, in order that you may, uh, that your eyes of your heart would be enlightened. That you would see, if I could just break it down, so that you would see things the way God wants you to see them. That's when you know your heart has been transformed. When you have a different outlook on life, when you have his outlook. On life, When your heart has truly been set free on the inside because of your relationship with him, you begin to see things and live your life from the inside out. Come on, not from the outside in, from the inside out. That he begins to do a real work on the inside of you and you see things begin to change. Come on, your heart. Oh, I just believe that's somebody's word tonight. You know, how's your heart? How's your heart? Is it clear? Is it focused? Or is it muddy? Is there things there that you need to let God t uh, heal tonight and take from you? Do you know that that's the next step maybe for you? You know God. You're going to heaven. But let me ask you this. Are you enjoying the journey? <laughs> Are you enjoying the journey? Well, here's how we enjoy the journey. By finding freedom within. 
allow, just allowing the, 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 the past and, and the people and, and, the, and just the things that sometimes so easily come and try to keep us from enjoying our journey. Problems. You got problems? Come on. We all got problems. But you know what? Our problems don't have to have us. You have been given, come on, a new heart. That's what he offers you. He said that your heart would be enlightened. Come on. Made new. That means to be focused and clear. I speak it over you tonight. No longer heavy. No longer a heavy heart. But a pure heart, a clean heart. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I might have to just listen to this again. I might have to preach it to myself after I go off tonight. This is so wonderful. Then the third step, I've only got two more. I'm doing good. I've only got two more steps after we allow our heart to be healed and to be made new. Then guess what? You're ready for the next step. And Paul shows us what it is right here in the same verse. After he says that you, he would pray that our eyes of our heart would be enlightened. Here it is. So that in order that you may know, here's the third step, the hope to which he has called you. See, that's speaking of our purpose. I talked about this a little bit Sunday morning. So that after you come to know God, know him better, that's step one. Then allowing him to heal you on the inside, begin to do a work in your heart to change you, change the way you see people, change the way you treat people. That's all part of, the, of just this, this steps to, to, to walking with God and this spiritual momentum, momentum, this moving forward, developing and growing. Come on, that's what he's doing right now, I believe, in this time that we're living in. And that third step is so that after we find freedom, we know him in a relationship, we allow him to, to do a real work on the inside of our heart to find freedom. Then he says, now you're ready for the next step, and that is to know why you're here, to know the purpose of your calling, to know the hope to which he's called you. See, he's called you. You're here for a reason. You want to know what that is? You are here to make an impact in the lives of others. That's our calling. That is why we're here, church. But you see, if you see this, the, the progression of this, you can't know your calling until you know your freedom. You can't really be used effectively in your, in your ministry, in your calling, in your giftings, until you first to come know, to come to know his freedom. And, it's, and this is how it happens. This is the, the power of spiritual momentum of how we move forward and grow in the things of God. How do we, this is how we go from that dry, arid place of Death Valley into the most beautiful picture of life and beauty after that rain came. I'm, I believe this is just a, what the Lord is saying right now. This is how we get there. This is how we go from graves to gardens. Come on. This is how we go from being bound to set free. This is how we go from being held back to busting forward in Jesus' name. So that now we know the hope of our calling. We know why we've been called, church. We know who we are. We know that we've been called to impact the lives of others. That's why we're here. It's to impact the lives of others. It's to make a difference in the lives of others. It's to know the hope of our calling. Do you know you can't really know the hope of God until you know your calling? They go together. It's, he said, the hope of your calling. You know, some people say, well, I'll have hope when all my problems go away. No, that's not how it works. It's not when all your problems go away. It's knowing the hope of God. It's knowing that God is bigger than all of your problems. That's the hope. But see, you don't know that until you've been, you've fought, you have first found freedom after you've come to know him in a personal way. You cannot find freedom outside of knowing him personally. Do you see how this all just step by step works? After you know him, then you find his freedom. You allow him to change your heart, come on, into the person you were really made to be. And then you find the hope of your calling, come on. That we're going to walk in our calling. We're, like I've said this, I've said this all the time during this, this virus and this uh, temporary shutdown. That we don't just go to church. Come on. We are the church. We are being the church. A people that knows that we've been called. You've been called to make an impact in the lives of others. And then the fourth step, it kind of ties in with the third one. When he said, as I come to the end. After he said that you would know the hope of, of which he has called you, your purpose in life, you will discover why you're here, your purpose, which is to impact the lives of others. Then he said, 
after you would know the hope which, which he has called you. Then he said, and also the riches, here's the fourth step, of his glorious inheritance in the saints. What does that mean? That we would know the riches of his glorious inheritance. Watch this now. In the saints. You ever thought about this? That you have a heavenly inheritance? You know, on, on many times here in the natural, a good father will leave an inheritance for his children. And that's a wonderful thing to do. But watch this now. According to the word, Paul's saying this fourth step. It's a knowing our heavenly inheritance. Do you know that there is an her inheritance waiting on you in heaven? But can I kind of just minister to you tonight? It's not money. Thank God that oftentimes we have an inheritance here on the earth and, and things are left. And, you know, there's, there's a money set aside, which is great. But watch this. In heaven, we won't need any money. We won't need any things in heaven. See, heaven, it will, we won't need any of that. And that's why he's, Paul is addressing that. Wait a minute. You have a heavenly inheritance. Well, if it's not money, if it's not possessions, if it's not things that are passed down from our father and mother, what is it? Well, he tells us right here. Are you ready for this? It's his glorious, it's his riches of his glorious inheritance. Watch this next word. In the saints, in his holy people. Do you want to know what our inheritance is, church? It's other people. You want to know why that's a heavenly inheritance? Because people are the only thing on this earth that are going to last forever. That is our heavenly inheritance. It's making an impact. It's making a difference in the lives of others. And to see lives, see God impact our lives so that we can impact their lives for all of eternity. That is your inheritance, is to make an impact in the lives of others and see other people, come on, come to know Jesus Christ in a personal way. And that is part of our heavenly inheritance. We're going to, you know what? That's people is the only thing on this earth that's going to last forever. It's people. I've just come to encourage you, church, with these four steps. See, that's when you know. That's when you know when you're walking and moving forward with the things of God. When you're literally, no, live your life in such a way that you are making an impact in the lives of others because you understand, come on, there is a heavenly inheritance. The church, this is not all there is. If all you see, if this is all you see, if all you see is what you see, then all you see is not all there is to see. There is a heavenly inheritance that's been set aside for you. Yes, you. And it's other people. Do you know we've been called to reach people? And I believe, church, that during this entire uh, virus and setback, I believe what is happening is we are, all of us, myself included, associate pastor included, that I believe in this season we are, we are having a renewed sense of reaching people. You know why? Because we, we've kind of had to step out of our what we know as comfort, coming to church every week and, and doing our worship like we do. And like I said, it's wonderful. Matter of fact, can't wait till we get back to doing it that way. And we believe it won't be real long. But in the meantime, I believe it's forcing us to think outside of ourselves. Wait a minute. Our, our, our schedules have been changed. Our, the way we do things have been changed right now. You want to know why? Because I believe it's the Lord's way of just wanting us to know Wait a minute. There's a heavenly in inheritance. There's people that God has purposed for us to reach and make an impact. And we could see lives change. Come on. Not just for a week or two. But watch this now. For all of eternity. That we can make hell smaller and heaven larger. How do we do it? Do we have to be a full-time evangelist? No, we don't. We just have to know him better. Come on. I'm going to end right here. Find freedom and allow him to deal with the things in our heart that he needs to deal with. Come on. What do you need to be set free from? I believe that's one of the steps as we grow and we get to know him. You get to know, wait a minute. I've been called to live free. I've been called to live this life and not be hindered and bound by anything, anyone. The devil is alive. I've been called to live free. I've been called to flourish. I just want to speak that over you, church family and friends. I speak it over you no longer in that arid, dry place, come on, of Death Valley. No, it's not. 
It's not dead. It's just dormant. It just needed some rain. It just needed some water. Could it be that tonight I just come to you tonight to just put some water, to add some water to your heart, to your soul? So what is already inside of you could begin to flourish. Come on, that freedom that you so desire. Come on, to be delivered from that substance. Come on, how long do you want to live with that substance? How long do you want to live with that? You don't have to live another day with that addiction. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All you need is the rain, the water of the Holy Spirit that takes the dry place to the beautiful place. The blessed place, shining, flourishing. We're not, we're not surviving right now, church. I'm going to tell you that, family and friends. We're not in survival mode right now. We are in thriving mode right now. I believe there's a flourishing that is coming that we've not even seen. But church, the key is, in closing, before we pray, we have to be willing to humble ourselves. We have to be willing to walk by faith and believe God in what God's word says. That we find freedom after we know him in a personal way. Then we discover our calling, know who we are, what we're about, what, what we're here to do to make a difference. So that we can experience, come on, this heavenly inheritance. It's the only inheritance that lasts forever. Hallelujah. I believe you received the word tonight. Just before we pray, I just want to pray a blessing over you and we're going to say goodbye for tonight. But I wanted to tell you before we pray that Miss Cammie, my wife, who's actually being my lead camera person tonight, holding the phone for this uh, live, Facebook Live tonight, she did a video today on Facebook. And you know Cammie, she doesn't do videos all the time, but she does them when she feels prompted and, and by the Holy Spirit when she has a word. You know Miss Cammie, that's how she operates. She was given a word. She shared a word today on Facebook. And y'all want to encourage you, if you've not watched it, to please go and find it and watch it. it. It's a timely word in season with what we're going through right now. And she talks about the times of isolation, oftentimes, which is what a lot of us are facing right now. But it's in those times of isolation that God does transformation in our lives. And that's when he wants to do the a real work in our lives. Yes, even in those times. And I believe it would bless you. So please look for it on Facebook. Uh, it's a word in season from my beautiful wife, and I know it would bless you, and I believe it would bless others if you share it. So would you do that? Let's pray together tonight. Just bow your head right where you are. Father, we thank you for this word. I believe, Father, that it was the word that you had for, prepared in advance for tonight, and I believe, Father, that your people receive your word tonight. I thank you, Lord. For everyone that was able to watch tonight and share and start a watch party, I thank you for that, Lord, that we're just doing what we can to get the word of God out now more than ever. We thank you for that, Lord, for helping us to do it. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you minister to each heart tonight, that we receive this word from you. And I thank you, Father, that as we walk in it, as we live in it, as we, Father God, uh, obey your word tonight, for what, what it is that, you're, that you've ministered to us, what you've Father, deposit into our heart. May we just have a heart to obey. Father, I thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to produce, the fruit that will come, the, the, just the beauty, Father, for where there's been maybe, Father, just a, a difficulty of just uh, being at a rough place. I believe I've spoken your word, Father, to your people tonight, that you take us from the dry place to the fruitful place, the blessed place. And we are not surviving. We are thriving because of you and your word and your spirit inside of us. I thank you, Father, in advance for what you are going to do and what you are doing. And I give you praise, honor, and glory. I pray a blessing, Father, your blessing on every fam uh, Faith Center Church family and friends. We bless them tonight, Father, in this season that they continue to walk in your provision and your protection, Father God. And I thank you, Lord. For using our church family and friends, Father, to impact the lives of others for your glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning, drive-in church, 10 a.m. God bless you. Hit it.